everybody man i hope everybody's having a productive day feeling blessed and like i always say it's one life one chance we only got one chance to do this right let's get it done so let's take it back all the way back to my county jail days these are some interesting ones got in trouble a lot because i was new didn't know nothing i was already a big homie pulled off the streets didn't really know what i was doing got myself in a wreck multiple times so let's talk about it with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for your guys' support. Now, I was fresh off the streets. I was looking at my case. I went to Tulare County Main Jail. I was on the fourth floor, high power floor, whatever they call it, high profile floor. And uh, I wound up getting into it. I was like gassing like my J-Cat. I attacked a, a black dude that uh, had something to do with one of my grandma's cases. He took, he, they, they, they took a lot of people's lives in Tulare and one of them was one of my grandma's. So, um, you know, I retaliated. He had, they had been there nine years and um, I did what I had to do. That could have started a war. So I went under investigation for that. Everything came out cool, clean, whatever. So I think it's about four months. And because there was seven Norteños that were already right there for violations, either going to go back to the pen, to reception. Some of them are already validated, going to go to the shoe. So I'm getting educated on all these individuals. I'm getting educated by all these individuals. I'm learning the CLC. That's the main thing. I went in there wet behind the ear. I didn't know nothing. I told them who I work for. I told them the things that I've done. I, I put it down on my questionnaire, everything that I've done. For on behalf of the big homies on the streets, there was two carnales that were in the county jail at the time. So I got cleared. They did the background check for my status. That got cleared. But when they started, when you get cleared for your status, they, that's when they, you get another questionnaire. Like, man, what is your level of education? What, what kind of experiences you have? What kind of skill set? What kind of asset? What kind of resources? And I told them, like, I'm very uneducated. I just came off the streets. I just know how to work for the regiment. I was just a squad member. So they had to start me from the basic levels of education. So I'm doing a lot of meaning writing every day, more than anybody, because I'm, I'm, I'm rewriting. Pretty much I had to rewrite every COC position. I had to get their bundle and Xerox it, make brand new copies, memorize it that I'm writing it, and then give them the brand new copies and hold on to the old copies that came out of their butt that still smelled like their butt, and I'd have to sit there on my bunk smelling their butt and memorize my education. And get a grasp, a grasp and understanding. Once I did, I would let them know. They questioned me on it, and then I would uh, get that position. They would relinquish a regular northerner that was getting trained. I would hold that position. Then I'd do my education, the 14 bonds and the format, and the Norteño history, and then I would do the next position that I'm gonna get. So I'd hold a position for a couple of weeks, know what it feels like, and then the same thing, same process. Somebody decides to just go take a dump, unwrap their bundle. Give it to me. Sometimes there'd be poop soup through it. So I just unroll it and you see the sides are all wet of the wheelhouse. So, you know, that's their poop juice. And I would Xerox that too. Just smelling butt all day. Just whatever. And then I'd do the same process. I'd memorize that. Read his butt. Smell his butt. And then I'd memorize that. Get educated. Get questioned. And then hold that position. So I kept moving up the positions and I was learning fast. I was becoming real educated. You know, I wasn't a dumb kid. I just didn't know how to apply myself. I began working hand in hand. I was uh, I was pretty much the block channel for all the top tier and bottom tier. There was like three or four more positions before me before you get to the authority in charge in my section, which happened to be Smiley from Goshen. He was from Goshen's most craziest. And he was in there for a hot one killing a southerner at a jack in the box. So I'm chopping it up with them, but for some reason me and him didn't see eye to eye. We didn't see eye to eye when he tried to get my celly removed because my celly wanted to become a Christian and stop wanting to program with northerners. We didn't see eye to eye when he beat up this one particular bysa that I didn't like. You know, he was making some like questionable calls, but nobody was questioning because the admon because this dude's never been to prison. But he's running the county jail because he was working for a big homie on the streets that happened to be the regiment commander for the county jail. The other admonos were like, they're doing their own thing. They were like, hey, but we're just gonna do us, supervise, you need our help. But there are too many, they're busy focusing on their cases, their violations, where they're going next, 
taking care of who they were taking care of and working with who they were working with, other uh, carnales, because there was quite a few carnales at, at the time, around that time in 2005 and six. There was a lot in Tulare County. Mind, mind you, I came off the streets working for the regiments. And like I told you in one of my other videos, physical discipline was happening. I was still seeing homies get down one-on-one. -on -one. It's just when the regiment asked, like, I mean, we heard homies were getting down. Nah, nah none of that's going on, bro. Don't even trip. But what you mean, bro? That was a lady, bro. She punched him in the face, bro. I mean, she's a toxic chick, bro. Don't worry about it. Bro, that's, he had it coming, bro. He looked at the other girl's butt, and that's what happened. We used to get away with a lot, and then there was an investigation that was being conducted because two end souls got stabbed by, you know, VCP, and a lot of us were getting questioned because a lot of us were covering it up. So they they knew there. Was, so I come off, I came off the streets where we were still beating up homies on the under. We were still putting hands on homies on the. Under. I can call a homie out if I wanted that fade. I'm a YA baby. They didn't train me how to be a squad member. They just told me to be a squad member and told me what to do. And that's it. They didn't give me all the rules and regulations of what it was like to be in the penal system. I didn't know what it was like to be in county. So I didn't know you really couldn't fight a homie because I was too busy doing it, ignoring that people didn't want it to be done. Yes, it was a rule, but we were ignoring it so much that it, I didn't bother to remember. Hey, bro, it's a rule. You really can't do it. No red on red crime. So the dumbest thing happens, bro. He puts me on freeze once because I got caught with a banger and then I had to do a removal to clean my to clean my uh, clean my act up for getting caught with a banger. But that was a stupid thing. That was a stupid scenario. So I'm already mad at this dude. Like, hey, bro, he made me sit down on the bench for three days. I couldn't do nothing. I had to escort me to the shower, escort me to my cell. I couldn't talk to the homies. And like, I'm do I'm, I got status. He doesn't. But because he's the authority in charge answering to an NF member, you know, he kind of still overpowers me. I mean, if I wanted to take the position, I could, but I wasn't educated enough to run a county jail like he was. He had been in there like five years. So he kind of outranked me when it came to that. So, but I didn't think much of it because I didn't know nothing about rank and file. I didn't know nothing about, you know, what my status meant to a northerner, how I was higher than them. I was too busy just getting educated of what equality was, how we're all equal, how we treat each other, all this, and the COC. So I didn't think much of it. So I was already mad at the fool. Like, if you think you can just get away with that and try to punk me, bro, and almost remove me over what? Because I got caught with a, a metal flap that wasn't even sharpened yet. And because they held me in a sally port door to make it seem like I was talking to the cops. But I got cleared anyways by all the hermanos in the building. And told you, they told you to, to get me off freeze. I didn't, didn't trip on it. So I was mad, bro. I was really mad. Well, I had, uh, at the time, I used to get a lot of magazines. A lot of magazines. I was into, uh, I started drawing. So I was into a lot of the ink magazines. I would get maximum magazines for all the hyenas and shit to I trace with a piece of pencil and outline it and retry to draw her. I just use it for a pattern and put cultura on her, put paint on her, put clown paint. I don't know why. We, I don't know why Chicano art. All the girls got to have paint. What's still our fascination with clowns? I don't get it. Somebody answer that for me. So I used to draw a lot. So I had stacks of magazines. And since I had so many magazines and books, Bart from VCP gave me a lot of books too. A lot of people would ask to borrow my books and borrow my magazines. So I had to keep records of that. Oh, and then I would get the newspaper. I would get a Visalia Delta, uh, Tulare Advanced Register, and I think USA Today. I got USA Today. So everybody had something to read in the cell, bro. It was, it was boring. We didn't have no TV. All I would do is wake up at 6 o'clock and watch... Uh, uh, it was like a Spanish show back in the day where all, you would just see like 50, 60 girls on the hot beach. Mexicanas dancing, twerking, and thongs. I think it was Caliente or something like that. We would, we would all of us be at the door at six o'clock with our coffee. Like, oh, bro, I see. Oh my gosh, she got a. Oh, she got freckles on her butt, bro. I can see it from over here, but it's way over there. That's the best, that was the best TV we really had, bro. So other than that, we read a lot. I had a lot of material to keep people busy, keep myself busy. So I was shooting them upstairs to homies from my hood. I had like three homies from my hood. Two of them were Sellies, and Smiley knows. That these fools have my magazines. So Smiley's like, hey, let me get those magazines next. And they were like, hey, did you ask the homie? And he was like, yeah. So somebody asked me for those magazines. So I shoot the porter up there and I tell him, hey, bro, the homie wants to check out those magazines. They're like, hey, fools. And they got, I get a kite back. Hey, Smiley has them. I was like, why does Smiley have them? They break it down. And he said, you said you was cool. So that made me mad. So I wrote Smiley. I was like, hey, bro, like, why would you use my name like that? Like, I don't like, we cool, but we ain't that cool. Like, I never let you borrow my stuff before. Why would I, why would I let you borrow it now? Like, we just cool. We just, we work hand in hand. We're, you're my subordinate. So, hey, bro, respectfully, I'm going to need those magazines back. And if you, if you want to look at them, then I'll shoot them back to you. And then that fool wrote me back. It's like, what magazines? These are my magazines. Flipped. My whole YA baby mentality came out. And I was like, all right. Oh, that's what we doing? All right. And I was like, hey, fool, whenever we go to day room, fool, go ahead and meet me downstairs. Meet me under the stairs. 
I got you, bro. Let's see, you want to try to punk me? You think I'm some type of cool? I was, I roasted him on that kite. He has it on paper with my signature that I'm threatening another Norteño. I'm threatening the household. So he fabricates all this evidence, shoots it to all the dudes that got status. All the homies, man, it's spaghetti. Uh, the homie uh, De Leon from, uh, the, I think, Lindsay. The homie Bobby Lee Cohen. So they tell him, hey, put him on freeze. He needs to learn. So I come out, right? And I'm trying to walk. I see him coming down the stairs with a shower roll, and he has his face, like, serious. And I'm walking to him, like, what's up, fool? And here comes two SBs and all my brothers, like, hey, bro, you're going to have to uh, open your hands. Woo -woo, give me a razor blade. Relinquish it. And I relinquish it. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, you're going on freeze. And they grilled me for three days. Three days sat me on that bench again. And we're like, hey, bro, you, you already been put on freeze once. This is your second time. There ain't going to be a third. You know better. There ain't no red on red crime. Bond number four. And I'm like, look, bro. And so I broke it down. Like, hey, bro, this fool thought he could punk me from my magazines. Like, hey, bro, you guys already know I'm not cool with this dude. I don't like the way. I don't like his get down. I don't like what he does. I don't respect him, but I work with him. I work hand in hand with him. So I break down my scenario. They go ask him, did he say that? He said, yeah, I said it, but it was a joke. Boom. Guess who gets DP? Both of us. Both of us. I get put on freeze for three days with two dudes in front of me with razor blades like, yeah, go ahead, make a move. Flinch. Flinch, bro. Blink wrong. Blink wrong. Let me see a twitch in the eye, bro. I'm going to whack you. Because that was, that was their pretty much that was what they were told to do. Like, any sudden movements, whack them. So I had to sit there on the bench, just holding my hands, just looking at TV, not talking to nobody. So I get clear from that. Me and him got to do 2,000-word essay on bond number four, internal confrontation. We do it. And for 14 days, bro, for 14 days, every day at 12 o'clock, he called me, I call him, estas listo? Estoy listo. Maquina on track. And then we just start busting down. <laughs> All on the tier in front of everybody while they circulated the filter like there will be no red on red crime. No Norteños were threatened. No Norteños. Norteños will not steal from each other. We need to treat our property with respect. Treat one another with respect. Circulated that filter while everybody's reading in. Everybody hearing us bust down. Up, down, up down on top tier and bottom tier we had to do that for 14 days we never ended up cool again at all and then they gave me cleanup and i was like man i already did clean up once i mean what's the, what's the deal man I'm, we're getting away with a lot of these beat downs bro the cops don't even see when we beat up half the dudes anyways unless they scream or they press the button so removals in county unless the cop sees you that's part of the only time you really get caught other than that cow tower cops don't give a damn bro we'll be beating fools after death like bro press the button Come get him, bro. Like, like, acknowledge that he's almost dying, bro. Come pick him up. That's how bad county jail was, man. It was brutal. It was house of horror, to be honest with you. But that was one of the times I got put on freeze, man, that I could have lost my career real early for being a knucklehead. Because I had this YA mentality that violence solves everything. Because what the streets taught me is anybody tries to punk you, you know, do what you got to do. Which is admirable. You know, think, to think about it. Nobody wants to be treated like that. But I, I asked myself, like, man... For so long, I went through juvenile hall fighting, YA fighting. Then the county jail wanted to fight. Then I went to prison and got involved in all this chaos, utter chaos. That's so much violence. And all I could think about was like, man, violence solves everything. That's been one of my ugliest models that I've always seen. Like, man, if you can't do nothing about it, you can't resolve with words, you know, go to violence, bro. Violence speaks for itself, which is not a good thing. Because now that I've been humble for the last past year, I'm battling this part where I'm like, look, I don't want to be that guy no more. I think that guy's just, you know, everybody wants to be too much prideful and being a, a real street dude, a real gangster. You know, that's glorified so much. I'm, there's a lot of men out here, regular dudes that I've seen that, like, they won't even care if you talk smack to them. They're going to look at them like, all right, keep talking. I'm going to go in my car. But if you, you touch me, it's over with. You know, I got a CCW. I'm going to dumb you in self-defense, and I'm going to win. You know, I look at it like that. There's a lot of people that, are, that can easily turn their face away without having to resolve to violence and that's the mentality that I want to have because sometimes so much stuff during the day every day so much things that I hear about people say some sometimes there's certain things that I catch and I'll be like man oh my god bro if I wasn't if I was just a kid again bro like you know bring the old me out bro let's see if they really like you and then I snap back into reality like bro you can't think like that no more like bro a grown man is gonna learn how to you know I mean control his emotions it's gonna learn how to be self-disciplined it's going to learn that, man. Violence ain't going to get you nowhere. You know, sometimes, you know, different forms of communication will help you resolve issues. Mine was I just wanted to beat him up over a Maximum magazine. When I could have talked to him, I could have I could have snitched him to the, to the brothers and be like, hey, bro, he stole from me and been looked at like a little snitch. I chose the result in violence. 
And that's one of the biggest habits that I've been breaking. Because I get mad easy. I get mad easy. Like I get really emotional. I get angry. Once I get angry, I can't stop being mad for like days. I'm just frustrated. And that's one of the biggest habits that I'm going to break 2024. I already broke my sobriety. I'm good. You know, my mental health issue needs work. My anger issue still needs work to this day. Because sometimes I just be at home and the littlest things will set me off. And then I just close out. I close down. I just are ignoring everybody. So, you know, don't ever let the anger get the best you. And violence doesn't always solve everything. Because in today's society, that's all we see. Kids pulling out guns, editors robbing people, people running out of stores, stealing stuff because they don't want to pay for it. They probably have money for to pay for it, but they won't pay for it. We're seeing a lot of people turn to the negative aspect of how to resolve issues or solve problems or get what they want instead of doing the right thing. So maybe somebody like myself and others can preach about what's, what it's like doing the right thing again. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.